Welcome back. July 20th, 2019 marks 50 years since Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made history when they stepped foot on the lunar surface. While millions of people sat glued to the TV screens to watch the pivotal moment and to celebrate its anniversary, David Moore, the founder of Astronomy Ireland, joins me to chat this morning through this uh, major achievement and indeed what lies ahead. But first, here's a look at the momentous event from 50 years ago. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. Ever since JFK's promise in 1961, the US had been planning to overtake the Russians in the space race. 50 years ago, that dream became a reality. The wake-up call came at 4.15 on the morning of Wednesday, July 16, 1969. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins were about to make history. They had 25 minutes for breakfast, eating steak, eggs, toast and drinking orange juice and coffee. Then it was time to suit up. In a metal suitcase, they carried their air supply and waved at a group of NASA workers and photographers. 20,000 VIPs, 3,500 members of the media, a million people along the Florida coast and millions more watching on television focused on the amazing spectacle. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. That was the start of an amazing four days that saw Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin eventually walk on the moon. That's one small step for man. One... As a casual observer, I get chills watching that. As an astronomer, how does it feel to look back at that? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable that it happened so long ago. It shouldn't have happened that early. It was all a political space race with the Soviets and the Americans. And today we've got more well-developed space companies who have big plans for the future. But to think it's 50 years ago, only 500 people have been in space uh, ever since, and 12 have walked on the moon. Mm. It, for a lot of kids these days, it's, it's ancient history. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so for the first two, uh, being the first is the most incredible achievement, mm. uh, but it was fraught with danger. Um, a lot of people, as, as you said, um, were doubtful they'd do it, which leads to people doubting they ever did it, but they did do it. Uh, but pretty miraculous, they made it and made it back. Yeah, Armstrong himself calculated that there was a 50-50 chance that they would land on the moon and about a 90% chance that they would get back and there aren't many jobs where you have a 10% chance of dying. Uh, and in fact, the astronaut career path has not been good. Uh, of the 500 odd people who have been in space, a couple of dozen have lost their lives. Mm. And so there isn't a statistic like that in any other profession that I can think of. So it is a dangerous pursuit at the moment, but that's going to change. OK, we'll talk about the future of it shortly. Um, but to re relive those moments, uh, President Nixon wasn't too far away, certainly when they were on the moon, as in he was on the phone to them, I mean. Mm. Um, but he also was prepared to deliver a speech if it hadn't gone right. Yes, there, someone had taken the decision to actually write a speech for the uh, uh, contingency, and that's what it's been called, a contingency speech, mm. of them not being able to get back. There was quite a, a chance that, say, the, the rocket motor didn't fire on the lunar surface to get them back up. And that never been tested before. We tested the rockets on the Earth. Some had exploded, but not on the moon. The gravity's different. Everything's very different. You would have liked to have had a few trials of that. And there was a distinct chance they'd be left sitting there on the moon until their oxygen ran out. And how embarrassing that would have been in the full glare of the world's media, biggest television audience ever. And so a special speech was written, which fortunately never got read out. Wow. So truly the, the three men who went knew how dangerous this was and that they were prepared to give up their lives. Yes, uh, but you know, the, these, they had the right stuff. The, these were fighter pilots, uh, ex-military men in, in some case. They knew all the risks. And amongst the Apollo astronauts, they were practically fighting for who was going to be first. Mm. I mean, Armstrong's now probably the most famous person in history. He'll be remembered like Columbus. Uh, in terms of good people, he's probably the most famous person we'll, we'll ever have in history. First mm. person on another world. And is it true he, he nearly died before he even got off the Earth? Yes. I mean, they had a, a thing called the Flying Bedstead, which was a rig, looked like the, the lunar lander, uh, but it had a, rock, uh, sorry, a jet engine in the middle, which took a lot of the weight off it, so it, it felt like it was in one-sixth gravity that you have on the moon. And then you had to steer that. And he was practicing on that one day. It failed. He tried to control it, realized he couldn't. Seconds before it crashed on the ground, he ejected. And the amazing thing is, he went back to his office after that, nearly dying, and started doing paperwork. 
well, so as you say, these, these men had the, uh, the right stuff. Um, in later life, because I know uh, after the mission, they toured the world, they did a world tour and then some. Um, in later life, you got to meet some of the astronauts. Yes, yeah, they did a great world tour, fantastic footage of it. Armstrong was very good, but then for about 30 years, he ignored rather than, let's say, shunned the media and didn't do any interviews until his second wife convinced him to go back on the lecture programme. I didn't know this at the time, but he came to Dublin in 2003 and we were helping to promote his talk and the, the prize for us was to interview him. So I met him wow. face to face, shook his hand. Uh, it was unbelievable to meet the first man on the moon. I never thought that would happen. The next year we actually met Buzz Aldrin as well. And he was visibly nervous when he was uh, talking to us. His hands were actually shaking. He's quite a shy man. character. Yes, he, that 30 years away from the public light had taken its toll. His hands were shaking, uh, just, just talking, uh, knowing someone was probably going to write about this in a magazine afterwards, um, which was remarkable. I thought, he's the one that's nervous. <laughs> <laughs> he's a fighter pilot in the Korean War. Yeah. Um, you know, compared to me, he had nothing to be nervous sure. about. And uh, he has an Irish connection, had an yeah. Irish connection, I In fact, say. the, the interview was quite, was quite nervous and we had lots of, of questions, but one question we thought we'd ask, I thought Armstrong, Scottish name, but we'd ask him, is there any Irish ancestry? This is before we knew Barack Obama was Irish, Tom Cruise is Irish, everybody else apparently. Mm -hmm. So uh, I asked him expecting a quick no and on to the next question, but in fact, that's when the interview relaxed and he, he cheered up enormously and said, they had just traced the family history and they came, the Armstrongs came from Fermanagh. Okay. And then he laughed when he said, apparently, they were known for stealing cattle. <laughs> At that stage, he's one of us. We can claim Armstrong as Irish. Maybe that's how they ended up in America in the first place. Who knows? Perhaps so, yeah. Um, and then you met Buzz Aldrin, totally different character. Yes, yeah. And if you watch any of his interviews, uh, Armstrong died 2012. Aldrin's still with us. So is Mike Collins. And uh, he was a much more ag aggressive character, shall we say, or extrovert character. He'd stayed in the media all those decades. And uh, to be fair to him, I asked him a very long meandering question. And at the end of it, he said, can I speak now? <laughs> and I, oops, I shut up. <laughs> because the, two years before, he had uh, punched a moon hoaxer who was pestering him outside a hotel, mm. uh, wasn't charged because they reckoned he was defending himself. Um, so he has that kind of reputation. Yeah. So totally different characters. And a lot of people said Armstrong was the right person to be first on the moon um, because of his demeanor, no ego at all. Okay, um, let's look ahead to what, what the future holds for um, space travel. Mm. How long is it since we've last had a man on the moon and when will we next have a man or woman yeah, on the moon? Yeah, well, the Americans and Soviets were having in a race. The Americans won, the Soviets more or less gave up. There were uh, uh, six missions that landed on the moon. There were more sh planned and the rockets had been built. They were used for other projects afterwards, but the public interest waned. It's very expensive science. We got a lot of the science back. 5% of the federal budget was being used. So they ended in December 72. So it's two and a half years of moon landing. Seems a lot longer. And then it was over. And the next big thing that happened was the space shuttle followed by the International Space Station, which flies over Ireland actually every night this coming week. Uh, check out our, our webpage for our social media links. You'll actually get a prediction every evening. I was looking at it two nights ago and it was clear. Okay. Uh, there are, in fact, there's three astronauts on board now, but there's three more being launched today. Okay, well, we have your website up there. I'm sure many people would like to check that out. So mm. will we have a man or woman on the moon in the next 10 years? Well, Trump has now directed NASA to go back to the moon in five years, 2024. Wow. Remarkable jump forward and we thought it was going to happen in the 2030s and they've given NASA on top of their 20 billion dollar a year budget an extra billion dollars to do this. NASA says it can do it. Uh, so it looks like the Americans are certainly going back to the moon. They're going to have a base around the moon as well and that's a stepping stone for Mars probably in the 2030s. Okay. Okay, and uh, this weekend alone for the 50th anniversary, I know you have a, a number of events going on and people can follow you on astronomy.ie and find out more. Exactly. Our big event is actually next month at our big annual star party called Starbecue, Apollo theme, rocket launch, big Apollo lecture. You'll see it on astronomy.ie. David, thank you so much. Nice My to pleasure. chat. On National Armstrong was Irish Day. That's what we're calling today. <laughs> yeah, we'll add that in with the, the day they landed on the moon too. Thank you very much, David.